Hi guys, welcome to Saltwater Saturday on Life of Gaz. This is where I aim to put a new sea fishing video on every Saturday at 5 p.m. Hi guys and welcome to Life at Gaz and today I'm fishing out on the Blue Mink. We're going offshore, we're going out to the wrecks. So uh, it's a few miles out, it's about 60-70 miles to get to them. So uh, with any luck the trip's going to be worth it and we're going to get some fish. Now I'm going out on the Blue Mink today, uh, it's a charter boat which comes out of Fleetwood. If you want to know anything about this charter boat what I'm going to do is leave a link in the description to his Facebook page and then you'll be able to ask the skipper any of the questions you need. But for now, fingers crossed, he's going to put us on the fish today. So there you go guys, that's the booms that I'm using. It's a flying collar, so where my fingers are here, that's where the main line attaches. Then I've got a weak link down to the weight. If that hangs up on the wreck, I can just snap that off. Then on this end, I've got a 25 pound uh, leader, runs down to a swivel down here. That one then, uh, is my weak link obviously on this end so if the lure hangs up uh, then I've got like a 50 pound rubbing leader and I'm going to start off with the old rhubarb and custard sidewinder and that one done the business for me last time but if that's not working I've got a little selection down there I can choose from Right from the first drift and the first drop and uh, the fact that it was only down there about 30 seconds whilst we were over the wreck and I struck into my first fish, I knew that this had all the potential of being a really productive trip and it was. And the first fish that I've brought up here, not the biggest I've ever seen but it was a small coal fish. Now um, I did catch pollock as well and this session really is dominated by pollock and coal fish as I didn't really catch anything else. On the second pass over the wreck I had to wait a little bit longer, I didn't hit anything straight away uh, when we got onto the wreck, in fact this was close to the end of the drift, I managed to pick up my second fish of the day. So that's two fish and two drifts, like I said it is a productive session this one and this one turned out to be my first pollock of the day.
so we're four drifts in and I've pulled four fish up over the rail and on the sea uh, like I said this is a productive session and I was catching fairly readily now my techniques when I was out here fishing obviously uh, I fish a lot of the time I fish mainline which is braid especially when I'm sea fishing and this means that no matter what distance or how much line I got out even on the last wreck where we we're fishing into 320 feet of water this meant that I can feel pretty much everything which is going on down at the hook end of the line. So when you see uh, when you see me pulling these fish in, what you'll see before the uh, initial sort of strike is you'll see me just stop winding. So as I hit the bottom and I have a couple of turns on the reel to bring that weight up and sort of clear it from any snags down there, then I've got a slow retrieve and if I feel something hit that then what I'll do is I'll just stop that retrieve just momentarily and this enables the, whatever has hit it to be able to try and swallow that bait before I strike into it. And that's what I feel is one of the advantages of fishing with braid is you get a good idea of what's going on down there. I have wreck fished in the past with mono and uh, when you fish with mono you just feel it go a little bit heavier to me and you don't get the same sort of feeling and sensation of what's going on down at the business end. Now when I was bringing these fish in, uh, some of the fish which come up you'll see them spit up little bits of other fish. I did actually pull one of these out of one of these fish because um, it coughed up in its mouth and as I pulled it out I realised the fish which are actually chasing around down there were sprats. Now I could have changed over, I did have some um, sprat sort of shaped shads um, but the uh, little um, sand eel sidewinders, uh, started with the rhubarb and custard, uh, were actually working quite well so I was reluctant to change over to them. But anyway I was having fun pulling all these fish up. Now after fighting this fish and bringing it up to the surface it managed to throw the hook and when you bring them up from as deep as that uh, they don't have time to equilibrialize uh, their swim bladder so they tend to float. Uh, this obviously means that the fish once it's up there it isn't going to survive. So uh, what I managed to do was I managed to just sort of control that fish with my rod tip whilst it's floating up on the surface and give me time to uh, shout to Skipper Andy and ask him to just pass me over the net so essentially I could just pluck this fish out of the water.
with some of the smaller fish that are coming up um, I'm not throwing them back and the reason for that is because when they come up from such depths uh, they don't really go back alive and that obviously means that I'm just throwing fish which are going to rot in the sea unless they get eaten fairly quickly now having said that I do have a use for these small fish because even though uh, they're legal size there's actually not a huge amount on them whereas if I take them to work I've got animals that eat whole fish there so it means obviously that I can uh, let some of the animals enjoy some of the fruits of my labors as well As the tide started to slow and we started to come over the slack water period of this session, the fish started to hug the wreck a lot more. Now at the start of the session, when the tide was running a lot faster, I was picking up bites around about up to 20 turns off of the wreck itself. So that's 20 turns on the reel and it brings you higher up off of the wreck. Now as the tide had slackened right off to still water, then what had happened there was the fish had actually started to hug the wreck a lot more and the bites were coming a lot closer to the bottom so instead of coming up 20 to 25 turns each time what i was doing was i was bringing that bait up around about sort of five to seven turns before dropping it again and this was uh, productive for me as i managed to carry on catching all the way over to still water and then back into the running water as well as the tide changed and changed direction and started to run again. On my last wreck fishing video I got a comment uh, saying about obviously the size of the fish down south are a lot larger. Now we do obviously expect that and um, obviously you can only catch the fish which are right underneath the boat and when you're wreck fishing obviously that is the way it goes. But I can't wait to get down south and uh, maybe go off of Cornwall or Devon somewhere and have a go on the wrecks down there and I'll be expecting some big things from what I've been told now let's just hope that's true but as for my channel uh, what I try and do is stay as realistic as possible and I do this by making sure that I post every single fish that I catch irrespective of their size uh, rather than just cherry picking the three or four good fish out of uh, a session like this one so uh, I hope you guys enjoy that and um, that is obviously one of the fundamentals of my channel is that I'm quite honest about all the fish that I catch.
Fishing over the wrecks, you do get the odd tangle, and that's what happened on this one. Uh, just managed to wrap around. Someone else's gear is bringing the fish up. Luckily, I managed to land the fish, untangled everything, and then we could both carry on fishing. At this point in the session, I was starting to uh, catch more than one fish in a single drop. Uh, so on some drifts, I was catching a fish right at the start of the drift, bringing it up, managing to get back down to the bottom, and then pick up a second fish on the rear of the wreck. Now, having said that, uh, wreck fishing, uh, you do lose gear, and um, I managed to snap off a couple of lures and a couple of weights down on the wreck, uh, hence why you've seen at the start, I've got a lot of weak links within my rigs, and they are literally just so I can get the majority of it back without having to sort of re-tie every single part of it just tie a new trace on or a new lure on or even a new weight but anyway that's that and uh, the fishing obviously as you can see is still going well Well, we're just about to uh, pack up and steam back in and in this session we've done quite well. I picked up five coal fish and I'd also picked up uh, 16 pollock as well. So it obviously gives me a total of 21 fish and to me that's a pretty good day out and a good way of enjoying this hobby. Well guys, I've had a good day out on the wrecks today. I've had pollock up to about five pound. A few cold fish as well. Now, unfortunately though, it is time to call this one a day. If you've liked this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, check out my latest fishing video to the side and my boat fishing playlist up top.